Good morning, Sister Ruth Hopper. Good morning to you. Sister Constance Willis. Sister Billy Perkins. Good morning to you. That's right. Hallelujah in the house Friday. Good morning, Sister Jennifer T. Newsom. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Deborah, J.D. Fuller. Amen. Good Hallelujah Friday to you as well. Good morning, Sister Danita Taylor. God bless you. Sister Charlize Hicks, good morning to you. God bless you. Ronald Liddell. Amen. Anthony Liddell, good morning to you. Happy Hallelujah in the house Friday. Yes, ma'am. Good morning to you, Ruth. Good morning, Jackie Banks, Eli Banks. Good morning to you. The Shanda Osborne Turner, good morning to you. God bless you. Deacon Julius Yelda, good morning to you. God bless you. Good morning. Sister Van Tinsley, God bless you. Sister Evelyn Bell, good morning to you. God bless you. Don't let your troubles get you down. Satan try to block your way. Stand right up and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Sometimes you just need to say, Hallelujah. Catherine Carter, Walter Carter, Carter family, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Kim Dean Close, good morning to you. Hallelujah in the house. Marin Bowden, good morning to you. Hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't he all right? He's all right. Yes, he is. I tried him for myself. Everybody, amen. Uh, we made it to another Friday, amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Thank God for another Friday, amen. That means, amen, you have at least two days, amen, to get yourself together, two days to exhale, amen, two days, amen, to get ready for Monday all over again, amen. But thank God for those two days, amen. Thank God for those two days, amen. Then thank God that we know that Sunday is coming. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We've had a busy week, and I'm sure you've had a busy week. Amen. But God has kept us. God has been good to us, and we give God praise 
amen, for all that God has done for us, amen. He, you do know that he has kept you from some dangers that you didn't even know about. Do you know that, my brother, sister, just this week alone? God has kept you from some dangers, seen and unseen. And that's what unseen means. Those things that you don't have a clue that God kept you from. You don't have a clue that God kept you from being exposed to certain dangers. Amen. Amen. When the enemy wanted to overtake you like a flood, God kept you. Amen. God kept you from being overtaken. Amen. God kept you from being swept away. God kept you. Amen. Amen. A few days ago, a couple of nights ago, amen, we had some high winds, tornado-like winds. Amen. A couple of nights ago, God kept us. Amen. We could have lost everything. Amen. Tornadoes could have came through. Amen. And knocked down everything. But God kept us. Amen. From dangers seen and unseen. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. We do give God praise again for all of you. Amen. And we thank God that uh, God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. Uh, my wife, Pamela, she, uh, uh, about four to five minutes ago, left the house. Amen. Uh, to go into the office. She has to go into the office now, I think, once a week or at least attempt to anyway. Um, but you know what? We give God praise for that because, um, you know, there was a time a few months ago that she was not able to drive. Amen. She was not able to drive. Getting on the highway just wore her out and, and caused her, 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 her heart rate, amen, to, 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 to shoot up. And she would get out of breath and would hyperventilate. Amen. That was all caused by her having COVID and, and getting that inoculation. Amen. But thanks be unto God that she's able to drive. Amen. And drive herself to work. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. And, and you know, we just take those type of things for granted. Amen. Amen. We take those type of things for granted. So we give God praise. Now, uh, I've gotten used to my wife being around the house, you know. And, uh, and, and, and when she's not here, it feels, I feel a certain way. I feel like, you know, I'm missing something. Amen. There was a time, amen, I wanted my me time. I was happy, amen, she would drive off to work. But now, amen, I done got so used to her, amen, I feel a certain kind of way, amen, when she's not here. Amen. I, she'll find me texting her three, four times a day. How you doing? What you doing? Are you leaving early? <laughs> Amen. But thanks be unto God. Amen. Good morning, Sister Stacey Simmons. God bless you. Sister Deneen Baker. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Glad you're able to join us on today as well. But we do. We take things like that. Our driving, our driving privileges uh, to go in and come out, to go here and there. Amen. We take those things for granted. And none of us Amen. None of us want to want to have to be able to depend on someone else to take us from point A to point B. Amen. None of us want to be able want to want to amen uh, uh, have to depend. Amen. But thanks be unto God. Now I will tell you, my brother and sister, when uh, 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 when COVID came and 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 me and Pam was in this house by ourselves and. Let me tell you, we didn't get along too well when it first started because, listen, we weren't used to being together 24 hours a day. Amen. And, and we found ourselves, amen, arguing and fussing and, and tension being in the house. Amen. Can I be just, can I be real with you? Amen. Because I have a real marriage. Amen. Amen. My, my, my marriage is not happy all the time. I don't have joy in my marriage every day. Can I be real with you? Amen. The bottom line was we were not used up to being together. Amen. 24 hours a day. And it took some adjustment for us. Amen. 
Good morning, uh, uh, Dawson McLean. Amen. It took some adjustment for us to be able to get along. Amen. To hang around with each other every day. Amen. Listen, listen. Uh, 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 you know, Saturday was fine because, you know, we would go out and do things. Saturday was fine. Sunday was fine because, you know, we was in church, you know, but to, but to, but to get together and be with her, amen, every day, 24-7, she had to deal with me 24-7. Ah, there were some days, amen, we didn't want to talk to each other. There were some days we was upset with each other. There were some days I couldn't stand to look at her and she couldn't stand to look at me. <laughs> but it took some getting used to. Amen. It took some getting used to. Amen. And look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just Sessoms. Amen. I know you got a perfect marriage. I know you got perfect relationship and all that. You ain't had to deal with all of that kind of stuff. But my God, good morning, Sister Cheryl Sesson Davis. Amen. But during that time when everything was shut down and we was told not to go out, let me tell you, it was some tension at 16344 Eagle Flight Circle. Amen. There was some tension in this house. You could cut it with a knife. I know Kirsten felt it. I know Jeffrey felt it. Amen. Because me and Sister Pam won't get along because we, we weren't used to being together 24-7. But now that we've gotten used to it, and when she leaves the house, listen, you would think I got a tracker on her phone or on her car. <laughs> Amen. Because now I'm not used to her being away from the house. Amen. Amen. But thanks be unto God. Amen. That we love each other. We care for each other. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when you love a person, you care for a person, amen, you will have arguments, you will have disagreements, and they will get heated. You know why? Because you care for that person, and you have passion for that person, amen. Some of the worst arguments is with your spouse or your significant other. It is. It's, those are some of the worst arguments because you are passionate about, about the person, amen. You care about the person, Amen. Uh, 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 that you live with. Amen. And so therefore, listen, you end up saying things you have no business saying because you get caught up in the moment in the heat of passion. Amen, somebody. Those things just happen. Amen. Those things just happen. Amen. And so and so thank God. Amen. That we got used to to being with each other 24 seven. Amen. God be praised. God be glorified. Amen. Amen. Sister Deborah says, Amen. And and you are all not the only ones. Amen. Trust and believe. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Sister Rhonda Dell said, That's how retirement is. Amen. It gets them getting used to. Absolutely. Amen. Sister Charlie says, I'm by myself for over 15 years. And I got tired of myself. Amen. So you know, if you get tired of yourself, you definitely going to get tired of somebody else. Amen. Absolutely. You will get tired of yourself. Amen. Sister Shonda, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Amen. Amen. Good morning, Brother Corey Sanchez. Corey, you probably know what I'm talking about too. Amen. Amen. You'll find out whether you really love somebody or not. Amen. Be with them 24 hours a day. Amen. You'll find out. You'll find out whether you love them or not. Amen. you find out whether you want to hang in there or not. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. We thank God that we got over the hump. And listen, uh, many of marriages ended up in divorce during that time of COVID. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Amen. Divorce and separation skyrocketed. Amen during COVID-19, during the pandemic. Amen, because some people realize, I can't deal with you. I can't deal with him. I can't deal with her. Something gotta give, amen. And many have decided to call it quits, amen. 
And my sister Cheryl, Cheryl said, I wanted to bust them in the head with the pot many a time. <laughs> well, just tell the truth. How about, how about that? Just tell the truth, Cheryl. Amen. And I'm sure, and I'm sure my wife wanted to go upside my head too. Amen. A couple of times. Amen. Amen. That's just the truth. Listen, listen, you ain't always holy. Can we be real? You ain't always holy. I don't care how much you love God. Amen. You ain't always holy. And your flesh sometimes will get the best of you. And you will say things out your mouth or think thoughts in your head. Amen. And sometimes if you, if you thought you could get away with it, you would. <laughs> Amen. But thank be unto God again, we take those things for granted. That Pam is able, amen, to get in her car and drive to work. And just a few months ago, she wasn't able to do that. She wasn't able to do that. Amen. So we give God the praise, glory, and the honor. Amen. Sister Connie Willis said, uh, I'm just glad that my husband had to work the entire time during the pandemic and even now. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Y'all just y'all just being transparent today. Amen. Sister Kim Dean Close says, I chose wisely and married a truck driver. <laughs> oh Lord, your husband just came on too. I'm sure he saw that. I'm sure he saw that, Sister Kim. I'm sure Bernard saw that. Good morning, Bernard. God bless you, man. Lord have mercy. We only get on each other's nerves half the time. I do understand. Amen. That's right, Dr. McLean. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. Good morning. Amen, Sister uh, Celeste Riley. God bless you on today. Amen. But amen. Uh, but 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 uh, uh, um, but sometimes, you know, you do get tired of each other. Sometimes you get on each other's nerves. We're human. Amen. We gonna get on each other's nerves. We gonna snap at each other every now and then. Amen. 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 And and Van said, Van said we were together the whole time. And Van, I know you got on your husband's nerves. I know you got on your husband's nerves. Amen. Cause you know what? Listen, I'm your pastor, and I'm way over here, and you got on my nerves sometimes. So I know. I know you got on Ralph nerves sometimes. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Amen. 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 Thank God for all of you. And thank God, amen, for your transparency. Amen. We had to learn during the during during the, during the, uh, the pandemic. Many of us had to learn how to live with our spouses all over again 24 hours a day. We all had to learn. Amen. We all had to learn. And we all had to learn all over again that we must choose our battles. Right? Certain things you just gonna have to let go. Amen. Certain things just don't even bring up because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Amen. You sleeping on the edge of one side of the bed uh, 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 and, 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 and the other sleeping on the other edge and dare and dare each each other to touch don't you touch me don't put your feet on me don't put your hands on me because I'm mad right now and I want to stay mad for a little while amen you know how we do sometimes being mad feels good amen because you think you think by you being mad Amen. You think by you being mad and not talking to the individual, you think, you think, you think, you think you hurting them. No. That person don't want to talk to you either. Amen. If anything, you just hurting yourself. That's all you doing. <laughs> just hurting yourself. Amen. And sometimes we as grown folks go right back to our baby stages and act like little children. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right, Cheryl. Don't get it twisted. I will marry him all over again today. And God knows I'm with you. I'm with you. Amen. 
through life's ups and downs, through, through, through sickness and health. Amen. Amen. Through all of that, God knows there is nobody I'd rather be married to than Pamela Sessions. Amen. Because she gets me. She gets me. She understands me. Amen. Amen. And, and, and to be honest with you, you know, my wife, she knows when to talk and she knows when to be quiet. And guess what? And I'm still trying to learn that. She's mastered that. But I'm still trying to work on that. Amen. But thank God she gets me. Amen. She gets me and I praise God for her. Amen. Amen. Sister Nita said the pandemic show taught us if we really liked our partners, the love was there. Amen. Amen. The love was there. Amen. But that like was different. It sure was. <laughs> there were times I didn't like my wife for a few minutes. And there were times she didn't like me. Of course, we loved each other, but there were moments we didn't like each other. Amen. Amen. Charlie said, it's so funny how me and my kid's father, my ex-husband, didn't get along, but had to take care, but you had to take care of him during the pandemic. Amen. I just knew I was going to put him out, but we got along so well. He was so peaceful. Sorry he got, sorry he got vaccinated and I found him dead due to a blood clot from the vaccination. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My, 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 my. Amen. The vaccination wasn't good for everybody. The vaccination wasn't good for my wife. The vaccination wasn't good for my daughter. Amen. But it worked for me. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and those were the chances that we had to take. And I also respected those folks who was afraid to take the vaccination. I respected that. Amen. Amen. I respected that. Or I grew to respect that. Amen. Amen. Because we know that this stuff, these vaccinations were not perfect. Amen. 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 Sister Marion says, hallelujah. Uh, uh, we keep the first lady in prayer. Amen. Amen. That's right. First lady need prayer. That's right. In order for her to deal with a, with a rascal like me, amen. She need much prayer to put up with me. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Y'all know, little union. Amen. It takes much prayer for you to put up with me, little union. So, 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 if you need, if you know you got to put up with my mess, just think how Sister uh, 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 Sesam has to deal with me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. My sister Cheryl says, "When I'm quiet, I'm most dangerous." Look, that's how my that's how my wife is. That's how my wife is. And I can't stand it when my wife is quiet. I want her to talk. Because when, she's, when she is quiet, I can't figure her out. When she's quiet, amen. Hurricane Pam is about to come on the scene. Amen. Dawson said, I'm, I'm really, uh, it's really a blessing to have a spouse who gets you. Absolutely. Amen. I get on my own nerves. So I know what my wife deal with. Amen, brother. I feel you on that. Hey, brother Bradford Hunter, God bless you, man. Amen. Pray for our nation because America is in a dog's mess. God knows you're right. I wasn't happy. I couldn't even stand to watch that whole that whole uh, 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 debate on last night. Amen. Joe Biden. Amen. Uh, uh, really couldn't get his words together. Amen. Uh, uh, I posted that. Hey. You know what? Evidently, he didn't have his Starbucks medicine ball last night like he did during the State of the Union. Amen. His energy was real low. But again, the man 80-something years old, right? 80-something years old. Amen. And, uh, and I'm sure being in a hostile environment, because he was in a hostile environment. Amen. He was in a hostile environment. And so all of those factors in as well. But then we expected what Trump did, what we expected him to do. 
amen, just um, deflect, didn't answer any of the questions. He has no policy. Uh, well, let me tell you, he does have a policy. And what, you, what we all need to do is educate ourselves, Google Project 2025, that if he becomes president, amen, those that under him, amen, will set the course, will set the agenda of America, amen. And America will be totally different as we know it now. That's just a fact. Amen. Amen. That's just a fact. Amen, somebody. Amen. And I said also on the post yesterday that Alfred, you know Alfred, uh, uh, the butler uh, uh, in the Batman series? Alfred has gotten old. And maybe Alfred can't take care of the Batcave like he used to. But it'd be crazy to replace Alfred with the Joker. Amen. 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 And so, and so uh, it is not two of the lesser evils, my brothers and sisters. It is not two of the lesser evils. You know, it's not a choice between the lesser evils. No, it's not. There's a big difference. I'm not in the pulpit, so I can say it today. It's a big difference between Biden and Trump, amen. Trump will, will, will destroy uh, this. If, if he would have his way, this would not be a democracy anymore. <clears throat> and if, if, he has, if he can stay in power, he don't care about uh, this country being a democracy. He cares about no one but himself, amen. He cares about no one but himself. Do you, do you not know my brothers and sisters that uh, during that trial uh, uh, about that hush money, none of this family showed up? None of this family? Could it be that they was embarrassed with this particular case? That while his wife, Melania, was pregnant, he was sleeping, paying a prostitute? Amen. How low can you go? Amen. Good morning, Sister Grace Bonds. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, and so, and so, and so, Sister Charlie says, let's go get the felonies and put them on the ballot. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and so, it is not a lesser of two evils. Amen. Biden has some morals. Trump doesn't have any morals. Trump is amoral. He doesn't have any morals. Amen. Amen. And amen. Of course, no politician is per perfect. And I and I and I hate some of the policies of Biden. Amen. But there's no choice for me. There's no choice. There's, you know, there's there I don't have to struggle with who I'm going to vote for. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> oh, that was a drop the mic moment, wasn't it, sister sister Fuller? When Biden says you have the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> Amen. 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 But we need to pray for our country. God knows. God knows. Because we're at the precipice, my brothers and sisters, of whether we want. It's not a perfect democracy. It is not an absolute democracy. America is not an absolute democracy. And the reason why we can say that is because... The politician, the president, does not win by the popular vote. If the president won by the popular vote, then this would be an absolute democracy. But amen, those Southern strategy folk, amen, those conservatives, what they did was, amen, what they did was they came up with this electoral college to make sure that uh, a lot of these Southern states Amen. Had a bigger influence on the presidential election. Amen. Because let me tell you, if the popular vote was, amen, if the popular vote was truly the deciding factor, to be honest with you, it wouldn't have, it would not have been, it would have been at least 20, 30 years. That there was, I can't even remember when the last 
Republican president won the popular vote. The popular vote. Amen. The popular vote. Amen. And so, and so, and so, those folk with this Southern strategy, they knew what they were doing when they came up with this electoral college. It was designed to keep the Southern states in power. Amen. Amen. Because if, that's all I need to say about that. Amen. Let me share this. Let me share this devotional with you. Amen. Let me share this devotional with you. Amen. Amen. And listen, and listen, and some people are, all they're concerned about is their tax breaks, right? And even Trump said last night, uh, we had the lowest taxes uh, ever in the history. Let me tell you something. When, when they passed that tax cut during Trump's presidency, you know what happened? I ended up paying more taxes. I ended up having to write a check. He gave tax breaks to the rich. But to us, we had to pay more, if the truth be told. Amen. Amen. He didn't give us nothing. He didn't give the middle class or those below the middle class anything. Amen. Amen. Just want to set the record straight. Listen, let me share this with you. Amen. Uh, Sister Stacy says, Amen. And the statement, something snapped when you lost. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Uh, 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 the question, the question we should ask is, would you want your child to emulate to be like Trump? And if most people are honest with themselves, themselves, it would be an absolute no. It would be an absolute no. Amen. Because you want your child to be kind. You want your child to love people. You want your child to have compassion for people. Amen. You want, to have, you want your child to just have some basic human decency. Amen. And Trump don't have it. Trump don't have it. Amen. He don't have it. Trump is an empty soul. Amen. He's an empty soul. And look at all that he has lost since he became president. Look at all that he's lost. Look at all the money that he's lost. Amen. His businesses, all of that. He has been exposed for the fraud he has always been. That's really what happened. He has now been exposed for the fraud he has always been. Amen. Amen. And amen. He would have done better to stay a private citizen. Amen. But now he's been exposed. My God. My brothers and sisters, I want to share this devotional with you. And it comes from Psalm 41, verse 9. Now, and let me say this before you go. If you are a Trump supporter, may God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. If you're offended by what I said, that's your problem, not mine. Amen. Amen. If you got a problem with what I said, that's your problem. It ain't my problem. Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Sesame endorsing a, 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 a presidential candidate. I can endorse whoever I want to in my house. <laughs> this is my house. I pay the mortgage here. Amen. Amen. And so I don't, I can give a doggone kitty whether you mad at me or, uh, about what I just said. Amen. That don't faze me at all. Amen. All right, moving on. Psalm 41 and 9 says this. Even my close friend whom I trusted he who shared my bread, amen, who, uh, those that sat down and ate with me, has lifted up his heels against me. Amen. God bless you, Sister Diana David Small. God bless you. 
Amen. 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 Thank God for all of your feedback. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. And I know we, we, we are Christians just like black folks. We're not monolithic. We don't think the same. We don't have the same ideas, ideals, and all of that. And I'm just giving you my theology, my gospel, according to Cessus. Amen. Amen. But David said, even my close friends, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heels against me. You will find that in Psalm 41 and 9. Even my close friend, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heels against me. I talked about Sugar Ray Leonard yesterday, right? I'm going to talk about Sugar Ray again. Check this out. When Sugar Ray fought, he would go to the corner at the end of each round and be met by his manager, people who would refresh him, tell him, have a seat on the stool, make sure you take some water and spit it out, make sure he was all right. They would encourage him, give him water, and keep him going. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if our corner people, amen, those in our family, those among our friends, those in the church, instead of telling us to take a seat on the stool, but if they hit us with a stool and discourage us, it takes away our strength, it takes away our willingness to answer the bell. Hallelujah. Enemies are expected to dog us. Am I right? They are expected to lie about us. They are expected to talk crazy towards us. But when folks who should be close to us hurt us, it's hard for us. To answer the bell. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, you ought to tell yourself, I'm going to answer the bell. I'm going to answer the bell. Even though my close friends who I trusted, even those folk who I prepared food for and I fed them, hurt me, I'm still going to answer the bell. Uh, even though they lifted up their heels against me, I'm still going to answer the bell. My brothers and sisters, I, I share this with many of you. And my sisters and brothers, my real sisters and brothers can testify. My siblings can testify. That um, one of my mother's closest friends, amen, was the one that called um, social services on my mother and said that my mother couldn't take care of her children. And social services came and picked us up. And we all went into foster home. It was my mother's best friend. Closest friend. Amen. Next door neighbor, if you will. Next door neighbor. Amen. Who called social services. Amen. She was upset. She was jealous. Amen. And she called social services. Amen. And reported that our mother couldn't take care of us. And they came and took us all out of our mother's house. Lord have mercy. My brothers and sisters, you don't expect your friends to hurt you. Especially your close friends. You don't expect, amen, your spouse to hurt you. You don't expect your own children to hurt you. Uh, you when you fed them, when you when you trusted them, when you shared close, intimate details with them, you don't you don't expect them to lift up their heels against you. Lord have mercy. All of that was over man. That's right. That's right, Steve. Amen. Amen. And you know, I didn't know that that was the reason. Steve and Cheryl, you guys are the ones that told me uh, uh, just in the last few, few years what really went down because I was too young to understand what was going on. Amen. 
Amen. But you don't expect your close friends to do those type of things to hurt you, to stab you in the back. Hallelujah. You don't expect that. And, you know, it's amazing to me that how my mother, um, evidently my mother forgave her because my mother still had a relationship with her after we came back home. And there have been some people who would not have answered that bell and said, I will never, I will never talk to her again. I will never have a relationship with her again. But my mother answered the bell. Amen. And still had a relationship with that neighbor. Amen. Who called social services on her. My brothers and sisters, that had to be the love of God, don't you think? That had to be the love of God. And my mother answered the bell. And I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, answer the bell. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Answer the bell. Though it feel like 10,000 midnights in your life, answer the bell. Amen. Though your marriage may be on the rocks, answer the bell. Even though he or she said they don't love you anymore and they want to drop you like a hot potato, answer the bell. Hallelujah. Though your children don't want to have nothing to do with you no more, amen, amen, answer the bell. Though your neighbor don't want to speak to you anymore, answer the bell. Hallelujah. Answer the bell. Come out fighting. I may have been lied on. I may have been dogged out. I may have been talked about. I may have been treated like a common criminal. But I'm going to answer the bell. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. That you gave me the ability. You gave me the strength. When the bell rung, I came out the corner fighting. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to give God praise. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right, Sister Connie Willis. It's not always the neighbor. Amen. It's, it could be your own family members. Amen. Well, you say your own nephew proved it this week. Lord, have mercy. And it hurts, doesn't it? We can be honest. It hurts when familiar friends, when, when family, amen, 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 go against you. It hurts. That's right, Dr. McClain. Our mother taught us how to forgive. And when I look back at some of the things that we went through, Amen. Mama, even though she's dead now and resting until that great day, Mama still is teaching us lessons of what the love of God is. The love of God is as well that, guess what? Mama could have enjoyed life and not gotten her children back. Mama could have enjoyed life and did her thing. But Mama kept on fighting to get her children back at home. Amen. And do you not know our situation wasn't all that great? Amen. When we got back home, but it didn't matter because we understood that family matters. Being home with mama matters. Being with our sisters and brothers, our siblings mattered. Hallelujah. That's what mattered. Amen. My condition me and my brother Richie, our condition in foster home was great. Amen. Amen. We had plenty of shoes, plenty of food, plenty of clothes, all of that. And when our foster mother asked us, did we really want to go back home? That was nothing to debate. We said absolutely. She couldn't understand why we wanted to go back home. Amen. 
But our answer was short and quick. Absolutely. We wanted to go back home. Because we knew that mama mattered. We knew that siblings mattered. And we wanted to be home with our mother. And if we still going to have to struggle, if we still going to have to wonder what we going to, what would be for breakfast on the next day, that's all right. Mama mattered. Amen. Amen. And amen. Yes, indeed, Sister Stacy. We pray. We pray. Amen. That President Biden will be able to answer the bell. Amen. And if he can't answer the bell, then that's what we have a vice president for, right? That, that Kamala Harris will be able to answer the bell. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah. My God. Answer the bell, my brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, you know how much it hurts when our friends turn against us. You felt the pain when Judas betrayed you with a kiss. You felt the wound <clears throat> uh, uh, to your heart when, when, when Peter disowned you three times. Your heart ached when all of your disciples deserted you. But that didn't keep you from going on to fulfill the mission uh, the Father had given you. You stayed in the fight. You answered the bell. And even though it appeared, hallelujah, for a moment that uh, you had been defeated, on the third day, hallelujah, I said on the third day, you claimed your victory because you got up with all power in your hand. Hallelujah. Lord, help us not to be discouraged by what those close to us do or fail to do. Help us to keep focused on the work our Father has given us to do and to trust him for the ultimate victory. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, amen, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus answered the bell on that third day when he got up out of that grave with all power in his hand. Somebody ought to give God praise that Jesus answered the bell. And guess what? And if Jesus answered the bell, he has given all of us the power to answer the bell too, because the Holy Spirit resides within us. And greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Amen. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May God keep you. Amen. I pray that you are blessed today by this devotional. Listen, I love you. Happy Friday to you too, Sister Marion. Happy Friday to all of you. Listen, have a great weekend. Get out and do something. Will you pray for me? Amen. I'll be preaching on Sunday morning. Amen. I'll be preaching uh, Tuesday morning. Amen. For the Baptist General Convention, State Convention uh, in Alexandria at the, at the uh, Hilton Mark Center at 8.30 in the morning. Will you pray for me? That's pressure, my brothers and sisters. Will you pray for me? Amen. And then also pray for me on Friday. Me and my wife, amen, will travel and fly, amen, to, <clears throat> to, to New Orleans on next Friday, amen, to install the Reverend Robert Beard as the new pastor of the Macedonia Baptist Church, amen, in New Orleans, Louisiana, amen. Pray for our safe travel. Pray, amen, also for safe travel for Deborah Fuller and Reverend Fuller. They'll be driving Amen there uh, as well. Pray for their safe travel as well. Pray for the services. Pray for all of our services. That God will bless us. God will meet us. And that some soul will be saved. Because this is why we do it, my brothers and sisters. We don't do it for a paycheck. God will take care of us. Amen. Amen. If I never preached enough, if I never got paid for another sermon, amen. God, God, God will take care of me. Amen. But we do it. So that someone will be convinced that after hearing the gospel, 
that they want to give their life to Jesus Christ. That we want to give hope to somebody who's on their way to hell. And they will accept the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it's all about, my brothers and sisters. That's what it's all about. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend. I love you in Jesus' name. Keep the faith, my brothers and sisters. Keep the faith. I'm praying for you. And I know you're praying for me as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Amen. For another morning glory. God bless.